Hey there, it's Chris with Acting Creative, and this is a hand-woven experience. And in today's episode, well, it is part one in a two-part mini-series all about mixing and matching. I'm gonna kick things off today with a conversation about how to mix and match weaving fibers. Now, it's kind of human nature to want to mix and match, isn't it? We want this item, but we want it in this color. We want this to go with that. Like it's this fun kind of decision making process. It just, as people, we just like to do it. It's just fun. And weavers are absolutely no different. We want to have the sturdiness of cotton, but we want the hand of silk. Great, we'll mash it all together. So in today's episode, I'm gonna talk about when mixing and matching fibers is no big deal. And the occasions when it's a little bit of a concern, but there are strategies to work around it so you still end up very happy with your end result. So let's talk about when mixing and matching fibers, no big whoop. My friends, it all comes down to shrinkage. If your item is not gonna go through the washer and dryer, mixing and matching is no big deal. Nope, no problem at all. Let me show you an example here. This is a project I did, it's a honeycomb project. And boy, I went through and then just pulled out everything, like the kitchen sink, it's all thrown in there. I picked things based solely on uh, color and texture and didn't even give a second thought to how it all went together because this is not gonna go through the washer and dryer. I don't have to worry about shrinkage because it's never going to get wet and have heat applied to it. There's no agitation, none of that kind of stuff. So if your project is uh, never gonna see a washer and dryer, mash it all together. Throw everything in there. Whatever you wanna do, no problem. However, if your project does need to be washable, it's something that you're gonna wear, it's something that is gonna have food around it, whatever reason, then we have to think a little more strategically about the fibers we're including and how we place them. Because at the end of the day, it's really about placement, that's all. You can absolutely mix and match fibers. You just have to give a little more thought to where they are in your project. So the easiest solution when you wanna combine multiple fibers in your project is to have one fiber in the warp and a different fiber in the weft because they're both gonna shrink differently, but at least they'll shrink consistently. For instance, if your project is all cotton in the warp, which I love oh, uh, cotton warp, it shrinks, you know, 10 to 15%. However, if you have, let's say, 10 cell in the weft, maybe that's gonna shrink less. It's only eight to 10%. Okay, great. They're gonna shrink consistently in the direction they're going. So one fiber for the warp, one for the weft. Smooth sailing, got it. Here's another option for you too. When it comes to mixing fibers, if you want to have multiple fibers in the weft itself, you absolutely can do it. But I encourage you to think about how, how quickly they repeat. Here's what I mean. Let's look at this little sample right here. Do you see this? Look at our nice little curve. It's like a C curve right there, isn't it? But this one, not shrinking. This one shrinking a lot. So imagine, instead of having, what, four inch stripes, five inch stripes, whatever those are, Imagine you alternate them much more frequently. So you have very small stripes or they just follow each other over and over again. When it goes to the washer and dryer, then they're gonna kind of average themselves out. So instead of having this crazy kind of C curve for the edges, you'll still have a nice straight, a straight edge to your project because of the spacing in between the two different fibers. They don't have enough time to really pull in for the one and spread out for the other, right? Does that make sense? Now, those are just two solutions that I've come up with. I'm sure there are other options for how to navigate incorporating multiple fibers into your project. So give us some thought when you want to combine, you know, a little wool with your silk or whatever, a little tencel with the wool. There's all kinds of combinations, of course, and they all have really good reasons why you would want to mix and match those fibers together. But Give us some thought as to how they're placed in the project and how it is gonna shrink, because that's really what it boils down to. How is it gonna shrink? Now, this is just part one in our two-part series. Next up, I'm gonna be tackling 
mixing and matching weaving patterns. Hmm. Stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, have a wonderful week. Happy weaving.